Okay, now we're going to talk about how we can write some code that lets us repeat things over and over. I'm going to clear my shell here, just to have a nice clean workspace. Now, to repeat things, we use something called a for loop. So I can write code that looks like this, for x in range one comma five colon, and we will just say print x. Now if I run this code, I see it printed one, two, three, four. Well, that's pretty cool with just two lines of code because before, if we were doing this, we might have done something like print one, two, three, four. We could have done that and gotten the same result, but that's four lines of code as opposed to just two. So this actually is a really nice shortcut for us. So let me talk a little bit about how this works. So we have the keyword for, and then we have x, which is a variable. Now it doesn't have to be x, it could be count like this. We could name that anything we wanted to, or I could call it y. So I have for y in range, and then I have these two numbers, one comma five. So what this does is it will execute this print y for y equals one, y equals two, y equals three, and y equals four. Now, you can see we had five here, but it only goes up to four. So I put five here, and this executes four times. Important thing to remember. So what if I wanted to make this count to 20? Well, I could change this to 21, and let's see what that does. So I can see it printed out the numbers one through 20. Now it is important, just like with the if statement, remember you have to have this colon, and you have to have this indentation here. The indentation indicates what code is going to be executed as part of your for loop. If I did print hello here, then that gets printed once because it's not part of my for loop. Now if I move it here and indent that, we can see it gets printed after each number. So these two lines are part of the for statement because they're indented underneath it. So that's a really simple example. Now I want to move on to our turtle graphics because we're going to make something a lot more interesting now, now that we have this for loop statement in our tool belt. So I have this example started, class five, it should be class five example three, and I have import turtle, we should be familiar with this. I create my window, I set my window title, and then I create my turtle for drawing. Well, in the past, remember, say if I wanted to draw a square, we did something like t1.forward100, and then we did t1.left90, t1.forward100, t1.left90, t1. Dot forward 100, t1.left, 90, and t1.forward, 100. Now if I run this, it's going to draw me a square because I had a line, a command, for each line here in each turn. Now you'll notice there's a pattern here. It's always good to look for patterns when you're writing code. And what did I repeat over and over again? Well, I had forward 100, left 90, then I have another forward 100, left 90, forward 100, left 90, and then I had another forward. So really this is getting executed, these two statements are being executed four times. So how could we do that? with less code, well, we could use our for statement in Python, and I could say for x in range, 
and I'll say one comma five. And what I want to do now is I'm going to say t1 dot forward, we'll say 100, t1 dot left, 90, and let's just go ahead and get rid of all this other code. We'll leave our turtle dot done here at the bottom. And if I save this and run, let's see what this does. So we can see it made our square. And we did that with just three lines of code and it made our program much, much, much shorter. Now we could make this even more interesting. What if we did, instead of forward 100, what if we did two times X? Well, we didn't, can't really see that it did a whole lot, but I could increase this and I could say 500 and let's see what this does. And you can see now my turtle is drawing this maze looking shape on my screen. It's going to do that for quite a while probably because I'm going to have it draw 500 lines. Well, that's kind of cool, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this and just close that out because that would be going for quite a while. So using this, it drew a maze. I'm going to back this down for just a minute and I'm going to put it back to five. And I want to step through with the debugger just to show you what's happening with our for loop. So I'm going to double click and set a breakpoint there and hit debug. And switch back to Thonny here. I can see my for loops highlighted. I want to do step into. You can see it's going to create my range. One, five, so X is one, we can see that here. If I step over this and step over that, I come back to my second iteration. You can see that X is fixing to be set to two. If I use F7 or step into, I can see here X is two. And I keep going, X is three, X is four, and then my code or my loop exits. I'm going to stop my program. I'm going to just put some comments here so that you can have that for reference if you're following along. Let's just do another loop here. And when we drew our square, we just had forward 100 and we're going to do this 50 times. If I ran it like this, it would just keep doing a square. But if I happen to change this to 91, so it's going to turn slightly more than 90 degrees each time. Let's see what this does. Now you can see here, it's starting to make this spiral pattern, which is getting even more interesting. And it did that and ran about 50 times there. So you can play around with that and see what kind of shapes you can make. Uh, you can try changing this number to different things to see what happens. Now we could also go back and we could say, let's make this two times X and run that. And you can see it's kind of making this twisted maze pattern. So you can try this out with a lot of different things. That's kind of cool. So I can make this a little more interesting and say I wanted to change my line colors. I could nest an if statement and I could say if X modulo two equals zero, then I could say T1 dot pen color blue. And remember the modulus is the same as finding the remainder of division. So this will always return a number between zero and one. Likewise, if I did modulo three, 
this expression would always be a value of 0, 1, or 2. So let's just do this. We have modulo 3 equals 0. Let's just add a elif here. And we'll say if that equals 1, t1.pin color equals red. And else, we'll say t1.pin color green. Now let's see what this does when we run this. And now you can see as it's running, every time it draws a new line, it's changing colors to either red, blue, or green. And that didn't draw a very big shape, so let's just bump this up to 100 and see what this does. So you can see it's starting to draw my spiral shape here, and it will keep doing that until it has drawn uh, 99 lines. So I will just close this, just to some quick review. Remember, if we want to repeat some code over and over again, we, use the, we can use the for statement. It will run this code 99 times, because we have one, and then it will execute it one less than this number. It starts at one, so it goes from one to 99. And each time through, x starts at one, then the next pass through this chunk of code, it will be two, and then three, and so on. So we call that iteration. It's a very powerful construct. With your loop, you can nest other loops. You can nest if statements. And so you can start to combine these blocks to build more and more powerful and more complex programs. Remember, you do have to have the colon on the end. And remember, your indentation is what groups this code as part of this loop.